as an end user primarily, um, you're interested in OSVR because it makes sure that you, have, you can have that single content library and play it in, on whatever hardware you want, right? You shouldn't be denied um, a content because of the hardware choice you've made, for example, right? And that's kind of the, the main idea behind OSVR, making content available on any hardware. Obviously, different hardware may be differently suited for different experiences, and um, you may have an inferior experience on specific hardware compared to others, but you should never be denied any specific like content, any games you want to play, just because you chose to buy a Vive or an HK as opposed to a different HMD, right? So that, that's the whole idea behind that. And similarly, for, for uh, you shouldn't be tied to a specific store based on the hardware you've purchased. If you want to buy games elsewhere, then you should be able to do so. With Vive, we don't really need to compete with because everything on Steam VR works on OSVR as well. So everything like that arc, that runs on Vive works on the OSVR-enabled devices. Um, in terms of other content, the way that we're trying to build a, a content library is um, we just announced a $5 million developer fund, um, which is essentially just targeted at bringing in more and more content to OSVR. And we do so without any restrictions whatsoever, where some of the other players in the industry impose restrictions by having exclusive uh, access to that specific content. We encourage our developers to actually work with as many platforms as possible, um, which is kind of in the, in the, behind the vision of OSVR. So we want people to not just work on OSVR, but also work with SteamVR and work with Oculus and everyone, um, because we want to make sure that content developers can maximize their install base and have a bit more financial security yeah. in that. And so our dev fund helps them get that financial stability. And at the flip side, we're not imposing restrictions that would stop them from being able to find money elsewhere as well. Um, right now, so for example, we don't have the equivalent of a Lighthouse controller. So primarily the experiences you may be able to experience today are seated experiences uh, that use a gamepad or mouse or keyboard. Um, but uh, the interface itself supports other controllers. So you can use the Hydra, for example, actually, okay. to use uh, to play motion control games as well. Um, so that's already available today. And um, then the other one in terms of time, there are no specific time but we have native support for CryEngine, we have native support for Unreal, we have plugin support for Unity, um, and with that dev, combined with the dev fund, there's going to be a lot more content coming in very, very soon. We've already had tons of applications coming in since the announcement two days ago. Okay. Uh, the lightest controllers actually work on OSVR as well already. Okay. Um, we're hoping to make, at some point in time make Oculus Touch uh, compatible as well. So it's a question of whether it's going to be open enough for us to be able to do that. Our own controllers is something that specifically, so not just always VR talking, but Razer is also looking at. So um, we're evaluating lots of different options, and that's a primary interest for Razer in VR. Okay. Um, and so likely the first Razer VR product you'll see would be a controller, but we haven't announced anything official yet. You have a gyroscope and accelerometer uh, and all that, like a magnetometer, and uh, all that in the H HMD itself. So that's just for uh, pitch, raw, uh, pitch yaw and roll, like 3 3 degrees of wind. Um, but in addition to that, we have infrared, base, uh, infrared LEDs in the face plate uh, in front, um, and then combined with an infrared camera that you see over there as well. So that keeps track of your positional tracking. It's the same technology in that sense, uh, actually, that, that uh, Oculus is using with the Constellation for positional tracking. So the uh, infrared LEDs within the face plate are like have a certain like are recognized by the camera and they keep track of where you are within the space. Today, that's primarily in a small um, volume, so it's not a room scale type volume at this point in time. But the solution itself is scalable. So with additional cameras, for example, you could bring it to an entire room scale um, tracking as well. Eventually, it's going to be able to support that. Yes, correct. Um, so we're already experimenting with it, um, and as I said, it's it, you can just up, up, like buy additional cameras, for example, and the same technology that you already have in your HMD today will then be able to do instead of just seated, but also room scale experiences. Uh, the HDK itself is going to be uh, available in like shipping in July. We're going to open up orders in July uh, for 399 uh, US dollars.